It's not all about beavers and their dams, you know. Hi, I'm Matthew, and this is a reality where you can learn marine science one video at a time. A simple definition of a wetland would be any area where the land is mostly covered with water for prolonged period time period. Depending on what you want to look at or study, you will find that this definition can morph into the field of study that you need. Here, I will talk about three different aspects of what I mean starting with biology, ecology, then hydrology, ending with geology. First, the one that you most recognize would be the biology-ecology aspect. The important thing is that most of the life here is found nowhere else in any other ecosystem. One reason is because it can be categorized as an ecotone. In this case, it's the terrestrial land above versus the aquatic marine systems further out. This creates a transitional place for most but a mixed habitat for others. The plants here are either really tall like emerging plants or water bound like floating plants. As for the animals, the most abundant fauna by far in wetlands are reptiles and amphibians, from the small and cute ones like frogs, salamanders, turtles, to large and strong ones like snakes, crocodiles, and alligators. Mostly because both of their beginning developmental stages start out here. Another reason is that their favorite small prey items are here. Insects, the next populated animal category are mammals, specifically birds or waterfowl. You've probably seen them either on non-profit locals or with endangered projects such as herons, egrets, ospreys, ducks, kingfishers, and cormorants. Mammals that are not as numerously found are rodents, platypods, bats, and especially the beaver. Don't forget the fish such as bats, herring, and even eels. Other aquatic fauna such as crabs are found here too. Now, Let's go into the hydrological aspect. In general, the hydro hydrology varies depending on the proximity to the main freshwater system and the distance from the open ocean. First, the distance from the open ocean. This can be linked to the towards salinity gradient over miles. This doesn't just affect the chemistry of the water, but also anything that interacts with it, including the plants and animals that live in or on the wetland, having variation of species in each. Second, the proximity to the main fresh water system. This can be separated into two types aquatic marginal wetlands and mires. Let's start off with an unlikely candidate, a vernal pool or a very wide puddle. These are very temporary mini ecosystems in terrestrial areas. Next on the list are mires. Mires split into two types either fens or bogs. Fens get water from groundwater and surrounding areas, while bogs get their water mainly from precipitation. Swamps 
have woody vegetation like trees, while marshes have non-woody like grasses. Next are the aquatic marginal types. These are riverine, fringing, and basin. A riverine or constructed wetland is a wetland that is next to a river that the water can make a detour in to get in and out. A fringing wetland is along the border of a lentic or load and logic system systems. A basin wetland is exactly what it sounds like a basin and it's the one that you may typically think of when you think of a wetland. The third aspect is the geological one. Wetlands have a unique soil type which is called hydric soils. Without going into the nuanced chemistry of it, basically it is it has a uniform blue-gray color throughout the depths with random splotches of red or orange. There's one crucial thing that you probably notice once you take a whiff of air once you're close to a wetland. It smells, it stinks, it smells like rotting eggs. This is because there are anaerobic bacteria on top of the soil eating away at falling down material at a really slow rate, releasing gas in the process. These ranges from ammonia or cow parts to sulfur compounds. All of these three aspects can be combined to create new added benefits. Because of all of the activity that is going on above and below ground, wetlands can be a natural water filter for contaminants. Since the wetlands trap things very well by the soils and breaking it down slowly in the water column, it is, a, it is also a good carbon sink. Lastly, because the water that passes through wetlands doesn't follow a straight and smooth path, it's a good buffer zone to protect inland cities, towns, buildings, or other places. Hmm. Yeah, this is a lot of info just for a simple ecosystem. Let me know if you want me to break this down further or just separate things out. Okay then, till next time, cheers.